What's up, my wizards? Dev, SBMTG down there. We like magic, all that stuff. There are five more Wednesday Almond Ket spoilers that they spoiled like red as I hit upload on today's first video. So let me go over these real fast because normally I would wait until later on and I'd see if there's anything else. But I actually think a couple of these cards are really cool and I want to go ahead and talk about them. So let's get started. Well, Melissa DeTora spoiled this on Twitter for us. This is Scarab Feast. It's just one black mana for an instant. Exile up to three target cards from a single graveyard. You can cycle it for a single black. Yet more graveyard hate, turns out. So Delirium is in trouble and Embalm is not quite as powerful, maybe, because there are two like pretty good <laughs> graveyard hate cards just today alone. This one is honestly fantastic. Cycling for just one black is great in and of itself, even if you don't do anything else with the card. So love it. <laughs> Target specific problem cards in your opponent's graveyard, which is something that Watcher of the Dead, we just saw that. Watchers of the Dead doesn't do that. It actually allows your opponent to pick two cards that they want to keep really bad. <laughs> this one, we can take whatever cards we want. And so that probably makes it Dare I say better. So there's that. I like this card, and we'll probably see a lot of sideboard play. The majority of these cards that were spoiled just a minute ago, my time, are um, actually Aftermath cards. Three of these five cards are Aftermath cards. So let me go over these real quick in order of how good I think they are in constructed play. So with that in mind, here's Rags to Riches right here. The Rags part is four mana. That's two and two black for a sorcery. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. The Riches half that you'll cast out of your graveyard is seven mana. That is five and two blue. And each opponent chooses a creature. He or she controls. You gain control of those creatures. All right, so in Constructed, four mana for minus two, minus two to everything is a little bit too much, and we've already got cards better than that. And they get for seven mana, they choose a creature to give to you. Uh, boo, that's really not great. Although you'll probably play this in Sealed. You know, in Sealed, it's removal twice, in a way. And really good removal the second time, you know. This can blow up everything on board in Sealed and then give you a somewhat decent, maybe, creature. Just You'll always get their worst creature. So paying seven mana for that is outrageous. I, I just think this is going to be played in Sealed if you get it and you're in black-blue. Do that, but no constructed play whatsoever, zero. Next up is Insult to Injury. It's a little bit better, I think, than the last card. The Insult half is three mana, two and a red, and it's a sorcery. Damage can't be prevented this turn. If a source you control would deal damage this turn, it deals double that damage instead. And then Injury, that half, is also three mana, two and a red for a sorcery. Same deal so far. But Injury deals two damage to target creature and two damage to target player. So you're looking at six mana to deal four to a creature and a player. It's not too bad, right? Um, and I really like the insult, half of this, actually, because, you know, you can cast a spell afterwards and deal double damage with it, and then you can swing with your guys and deal double damage with them. Like, all that seems pretty sweet for just three mana, but I don't know if it'll actually be worth a slot in anything constructed, you know. And there's cool stuff you could do with this, you know, like, if you have six mana, you can unlicense this integration, deal six with the unlicensed and kill a guy, and then, like, hit him with Dynavolt Tower and deal six with that. Like, that's 12 damage in one turn. Not bad. It could see, like, one of play in certain decks, but I'm just not really seeing it be, like, super popular in mainstream play. This does look like a fun card, though, and is definitely playable again in limited. Last thing I want to mention is that, like, Electrostatic Pummeler is in the format. Fling is also in the format. Like, we've got some easy ways of getting in, like, lots and lots of damage, <laughs> you know. So I wouldn't count this out entirely. It looks really weird and not great and constructed and all that, but... At the same time, like, doubling damage from a fling is possibly amazing. So, who knows? We'll see. Actually, now that I think about it, on, like, turn five, you just, like, have your siege modification on your consulate dreadnought, right? And then you double damage with the insult, and you cast fling, and you've just dealt 20 damage. That's a... You could do that. It requires four cards to happen, but, you know, you could, maybe. Also, Atog, Ravenous Intruder, you know, just, like, make it a 10-power guy. It doesn't even seem that hard. And then you fling it. Insult totally works too. Maybe. I mean, it probably it probably doesn't, like, work the way it should half the time. Like, they have ways of stopping it. But it does logistically check out that you could do that. But on to what I definitely believe is the best Aftermath card of the day. This is Cut to Ribbons right here. The cut half is two mana, one and a red for a sorcery, and cut deals four damage to target creature. The Ribbons half is two black and X for a sorcery, and each opponent loses X life. I don't know why this reminds me of Profane Command, but it's like a Profane Command that you're casting, like, in different steps. Anyway, 
Card looks pretty good to me, is all I'm going to say. I mean, sorcery speed on the cut half isn't great. We all would have preferred instant there, but I think there's enough play on this card that it could definitely see some mainstream constructed, some standard play, you know. Um, just the ability to kill a guy for two mana is pretty good, and you will be killing nearly anything for, for two mana here. Especially, I mean, anything they'll play early in the game. Um, you will be killing with cut. Even though it's sorcery speed, I still think it's worth it. Um, considering that Ribbon's half is on it, you know, late in the game, this has been chilling in your graveyard for like six turns, you know, you have the ability to just like do four or five to everybody later on in the game, and that seems pretty sweet. So that seems pretty dope, and know that it does say each opponent, so like this is even better in Commander, you know. I just think that this is sort of pushed, like these cards are extremely versatile, and like even if you dump the cut half to a cathartic reunion or something, you can always cast the ribbons half out of your graveyard later on in the game, like if they don't have a creature you can target with the cut, just dump it in there, you know, rummage or loot somehow, and dump that thing in there, later on you can just like bust your opponent in the face for a lot of damage, like I just think there's a bunch of play, ton of play on this card, I like it a lot. But here's the bonkers mythic of today. This is as foretold. It's three mana, two and a blue for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a time counter on as foretold. Once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a spell you cast with converted mana cost X or less, where X is the number of time counters on as foretold. Okay, so a lot of people super excited already about this card, even though it's been out all 15 minutes <laughs> before I started recording this. Um, but there are problems, you know, obviously it doesn't do anything the turn it comes into play. Usually Constructed doesn't play cards that don't do anything the turn they come into play. Even the next turn, all it's going to afford you is a free one mana spell. It'll take like three or four turns for this to start really being able to cast awesome stuff for you. But do know that this says once each turn, which means that you can do it on your opponent's turn. Hello again, Julie. That's really important for control decks because you can cast like card draw or counter spells or removal or anything like that on your opponent, opponent's turn for basically free. So that's pretty cool. So I could see this seeing some play in control, but it probably wouldn't come down until late. And if it comes down late, what's the point? You have plenty of mana to pay for your stuff, you know? So it's probably better than brain in a jar. <laughs> probably better. Um, but this doesn't like allow you to cast sorceries at instant speed or anything. Um, so I'm just not 100% sure you can cast any kind of spell with this, so that's kind of cool. But it just has to be out for so long before it really starts giving you the value you want out of it. Although, again, there are multiple ways to play this. A control deck could just play free stuff on their opponent's turn. So I think that it has some legs to it. It might go in some kind of combo engine, for all I know. Paying, paying nothing for spells is great. Free spells is great, but when it doesn't do anything when it hits the battlefield and you can't like cast really good spells until like it's been on the battlefield for two or three turns, I'm just not 100% on it. But again, free spells. <laughs> free spells are good. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. Let me know how you feel about this one. And not only this one, because obviously there's some reasons to get hype about it, but everything else too. I really, really like Cut to Ribbons. Let me know how you feel about that. Am I slightly undervaluing insult to injury? Am, or am I overvaluing <laughs> insult to injury? You know, how how good is the Melissa de Tora spoiled card? Let me take a look at it again. Scarab Feast. How good is Scarab Feast? Are you super excited about that to have some actually good, reliable graveyard hate that also cycles for cheap? So a lot of good stuff in just these five cards. Let me know how you felt about it. But that is all. For now, at least, if there's more cards later on tonight, we'll try and put them out for you. <laughs> you know, I got to make it to my trivia gig here, which hopefully will happen because it is storming fairly bad at this point. But got to do the trivia gig. Got to play more Persona 5. Louis C.K.'s new special just came out on Netflix. So lots of stuff <laughs> to do. But if there's more cards, we'll try and get them out to you tonight. I'm Deb from SBMTG. If you enjoyed the content, like the content hitting thumbs up is the best thing you can do for any content creator so do that you can also sub hit the bell for the notifications and follow me on twitter at sbmtgdev that is also my name and i'll see you guys later thanks for watching my wizards